Hi, I'm Eric Inga, CEO of Stone Temple Consulting, and with me today is... Mark Trappigan, the Senior Director of Online Marketing for Stone Temple Consulting. So, Mark, I've been hearing about this new network. It's called LO. Uh, what the LO is LO? <laughs> well, uh, LO is a brand new social network that uh, probably most people have at least heard about by now. Uh, it, it broke into the news because there was a controversy on Facebook and it caused a certain community on Facebook to want to look for a new place to go. They, they, they wanted a place that they felt they would be more secure and private and that wasn't using them as an advertising uh, uh, medium or gimmick. So, uh, product, and they found Ello. Ello was just this little network out there. It had been sitting around for five months and only a very small community was using it. They adopted it, but that became a news item and it blew up and all of a sudden everybody wanted to be in Ello. And uh, they, being a beta startup, they had limited invites. Uh, so that, you know, scarcity also then breeds uh, demand. popularity. Demand, yeah. exactly. And people were selling invites on eBay. You know, the, the same thing that happened in the early days of Google+. Plus. So uh, it kind of blew up. But, but what is it? It's just very simply a, uh, a social network where you can do the same kinds of things you do on lots of other social networks. You can share text uh, messages. You can share uh, images. Uh, not yet embedded videos and sounds, but they say they're working on that. And you follow people and they follow you, and that's you know, pretty much what it is. So what makes it different from other social networks? Well, the main difference is, interestingly enough, not its presentation, which a lot of people think isn't very good right now. It lacks a lot of the features that you would expect to see in a social network. Its main differentiation point is its message, which is interesting, its positioning. Um, it was created by a group of smart, creative people, uh, this group of uh, designers and, uh, and coders, uh, artists, uh, from mostly around the Denver, Colorado area, who, uh, just as I said earlier, got uh, fed up with, they felt, especially Facebook in particular, was using them as a product rather than as respected users, uh, meaning that, you know, you get advertising thrown at you constantly, even in the stream, and also that you are used as a advertising data point, and your data is made available to uh, potential advertisers who can use it uh, to market to you. So... Uh, they didn't. They wanted the network that was free from that. So the main uh, value points that they put out there is one: we will never have advertising on the on the platform, and two: we will never sell your data to anyone else. And those are the two things. And so the whole thing is really based out of that. It's, it's trying to attract people. It seems like it's trying to attract people who are just looking for an alternative where they aren't a marketing target. And if I have it right, I think the plan to monetize LL is based on upselling services to users rather than selling ads. So it's, it's not a, uh, a social media site without a way to monetize, it's right. just a different way. Right, it's the freemium model, as many people call it. You know, many apps do this where you can use the app uh, for free and everybody, it always will be free. But if you want to do certain premium things, you want to certain, you know, have certain privileges. Think like you know, Link, LinkedIn, LinkedIn has a premium service where Anybody can use LinkedIn for free, but if you pay the premium, then you can you get more access to uh, who viewed your profile. You can send messages to other users, even if they're not following you. Certain certain extra services. So now here's the big question: mm -hmm. Is this thing going to succeed? Okay, so I have to put on my prognosticator's uh, uh, hat here. But um, you know, the easy answer is who knows. Of course, we can say that about anything that uh, that comes out. But if I had to say are they going to succeed? I think they will. Well, maybe let's back up for a moment and say, you know, what is success? Is success becoming the next Facebook? I don't think that the creators of this have any illusions that they're going to become the Facebook, nor do I really think that's their ambition. Uh, I think that they are positioning themselves as a, a, a niche network. We're a network for certain people. And if we attract enough of those certain people to pay our bills, then we're a success. So that's really the question to me, is especially now, since it seems to me that their, their appeal is to, for lack of a better word, let's just call it like a, a countercultural type person, a person who you know, wants to be uh, uh, outside of that normal box of big business running everything and advertising and marketing and all this, and just wants a place where they can interact with other creative people. If they can keep those people and keep that message 
then I think that they'll succeed to the level maybe that they, they need to or, or want to. What concerns me for them now is that with the, the, the blow up that happened not by their design uh, and all the people that are coming in now, a great many of those people coming in are not people who care about that. They're just like, oh, another social network, I should check it out, you know. And as soon as those people start thinking, you know, what can I really do here that's different than I'm already doing on Facebook or Google Plus or Twitter, not that much, you know, they might eventually fade away en masse. The, 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 I guess the, the bottom line question for them is, will they retain enough of the people that they're really after to be enough successful to keep going? Right. And then I think the, the, the last question really is, what's the opportunity for marketers then? Okay. Uh, the opportunity for marketers is to totally destroy LO and make it a miserable place for everybody else to be. Uh, now that's the... That's a very interesting <laughs> message. I'm glad you've... Uh, should we cut off the video here now then? Or yeah. I just said that so that the, uh, the LO creators won't delete my account. But uh, no, I think one of the interesting things actually, Eric, is that uh, while they have this anti-advertising stance, uh, the ELO founders have said, we welcome brands and companies to come on ELO. You, you can have a brand page. You can you know, use it. Knock yourself out. You can even sell things on it if you think that will work here. The more important thing for marketers to consider is the culture of the network. And I see it as potentially, again, if they succeed in keeping with their what I think is their target market, I see potentially being sort of Reddit-like. You know, we all know in Reddit that uh, you can market on Reddit, but you've got to do it very, very carefully. Redditors don't like promoters. They don't like marketers. And if they sniff out that that's what you're there for, they'll kill you. So I think you're going to have to approach Ello as a place where you, you build, uh, you know, you create great content that that market's going to want, that you, uh, you engage as real people, um, and that you, you add value that that market will appeal to, and you build maybe a overall brand presence, but you're not going to go in there to sell, I think, directly. Right. So like uh, other platforms, but maybe even more so, it has to all be about adding value to the community. And if you can do that as a marketer, you can get exposure to other people, build your reputation, get visibility, get new connections, right. maybe with different sets of people than you do on those other right. networks. I think you know, that, will be the, that will be the challenge, and uh, some people will probably succeed at it, and it will be interesting to watch what they do. Excellent. Well, that's it for this episode of Here's Why with Mark and Eric.